um, this is uh, interesting and new for uh, new as a uh, as a project and uh, uh, and uh, interesting as a subject now social forestry what do you mean by what is uh, the term social forestry stands for is uh, what has been discussed in this unit and the details of so the social forestry has been given here so first we need to understand that uh, uh, that uh, um, there's a lot of uh, dependence on forest for natural for natural needs and natural resources and because of uh, these continuous development activities and the shrinking of the forest land the pressure of forest products has immensely increased and uh, uh, it was realized by the government that um, it was realized by the government that we need to ensure that the pressure of resource forest resources uh, forest products sorry the pressure of uh, forest products needs to be in, in uh, 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 decreased the pressure needs to be decreased and a strategy needs to be put in place for the maintenance for the maintenance of these uh, of forest resources to ensure that uh, the life of the forest communities are not affected by various development issues or various, various development programs so that that is why uh, the social forestry approach was taken up in which uh, the aim is to actually uh, increase afforestation, in, increase afforestation in lands which are not being used for agricultural purposes and which are lying uh, vacant. So it was uh, this pro this uh, approach aims at planting trees in and around areas that are uh, available to us so that the pressure of uh, the pressure is taken away from the uh, from the forest for its product and its uh, 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 natural resources so what is done is that it was uh, seen that there was a lot of uh, fallow degraded land that was lying uh, vacant and uh, whether um, there were common village lands that were uh, available, there were um, uh, wastelands, there were panchayat lands. So what was decided was that trees would be planted in and around these areas even in those places where agricultural fields are there, trees were built around the agriculture, built, no, sorry, planted around the uh, agricultural land. Trees were planted along railway lines, along ro roadsides, rivers, and canal banks so that they, uh, so that the growing need of uh, the demand for wood as a uh, cooking fuel and for many other purposes as fodder for their cattle or for many other purposes the trees uh, the pressure that was uh, basically the pressure and the onus was lying on the forest areas to provide for such needs could be brought down so this is what is um, uh, what was the aim of this program so where all of uh, um, uh, uh, which uh, which all areas were identified or which all activities were ad identified under this social forestry was farm forestry by the term farm forestry we meant that the farmers were actually were uh, encouraged to plant trees in their own farmlands to meet the market requirements of the wood product so it was a proper farming uh, uh, in farmlands of uh, farming of trees 
to be uh, in, was encouraged and done at by the uh, by the individual farmers then there was agroforestry in this kind of a system or this kind of a system of land use where um, uh, it is it was not that uh, they were asked to uh, plant trees and uh, manage trees and grow trees in their area it was they were asked to to growing forest trees along with agricultural crops that they were growing from years uh, from the past years so agricultural crops along with uh, forest trees were in world uh, were targeted to be grown together and uh, here most farmers in india who grow agricultural crops also rear animals and plant certain trees on their land on the boundary areas so growing of these helps in both conserving the soil and enhancing the soil fertility and also providing proper shelter for crops and fruit trees apart from wood and export out so it they it provides shelter it provides fruits it provides wood fuel these trees so um, and, uh, so uh, the uh, the demands and the needs of the villagers were met through these um, to these trees instead of moving into and pressurizing the forest areas for their fuel and other requirements so this is a uh, 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 the agro um, forestry where farmers were encouraged and uh, where farmers actually not encouraged uh, the farmers indulge in growing trees and agricultural crops together in their farmland and then the third one was community forestry in community forestry uh, uh, trees uh, were uh, uh, planted and raised in community lands and uh, uh, community lands of the village there are certain common uh, land which belongs not to any private uh, player or not to any private party or private person but they are common community land which are there for the entire village to use so um, as uh, uh, raising of trees was done in these community lands so this is what we mean by so, uh, for, so, uh, social forestry so a lot of social forestry programs have uh, uh, are running in the country and uh, they are uh, uh, being run very successfully and has uh, uh, helped in reduction of the pressure for fuel and fodder and wood the pressure uh, on the forest has come down now because people have started using their private land and community land community owned land or private land to to uh, to ful fulfill their uh, requirements of uh, wood and uh, fuel by planting their own trees so now uh, this is this was uh, what is the uh, what uh, social forestry stands for now we will talk about uh, the joint uh, forest management and uh, this is uh, unit 3.6 so as we can uh, we we definitely understand that uh, once uh, forest land and forest uh, resources get degraded uh, degra uh, the degraded that um um the pressure or the concerns the the, uh, the degradation has raised concerns of the government of the government just a second please uh, just a second just give me a minute please
Okay, right. So we were talking about this uh, joint forest management. Uh, as I was telling that the minister, the government uh, um, understands the need of uh, uh, managing the forest and its resources and ensuring that the degradation of the forest is minimalized to uh, uh, to the minimum extent, obviously minim uh, is minimalized to the utmost. And uh, 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 efforts are also made that uh, these uh, forest lands are not exploited and uh, uh, the people living in these forest areas uh, and uh, and uh, the people living on the uh, or dependent on the forest products are not affected by the uh, by by this degradation and so uh, the government took into its um, uh, concern and plan to to see and to maintain these forests and and to uh, to attempt towards aiming at uh, uh, aiming at a program which would actually empower the communities to uh, which would actually uh, no not really empower the communities but which would actually uh, save the communities who are dependent on these forests from getting socio economically uh, 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 drawn away or pushed back because of certain development factors and activities. So this uh, forest management, this joint forest management uh, actually empowers the communities to assess, plan and manage the forest resources which constitute their main life support system. So this, this entire program, forest management was, as, uh, as, as I've been discussing, and as I have discussed in social forestry also, that the main aim is to see that the that the pressure on the forest is reduced, and all those who depend on these forests, all the all the areas in which and 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 by by uh, and naturally these all these areas are rural in um, uh, that uh, uh, in their. Um, constitution and they're not urban in nature so they are rural and that is why they are being discussed over here so all these rural areas that are dependent on these uh, forest resources they are they continue to get their requirements and the degradation and depletion of forest is minimalized so that the resources continue to reach out to the people and the community that have their dependence on these forest resources. So, um, so there are uh, uh, committees with, which were uh, formed to, to see that uh, uh, these, uh, uh, these joint forest management takes place in an efficient manner. And uh, uh, the community and the government and the people like village com village people or the government people have come together to to jointly manage these forests from getting depleted and ensuring that the forest resources continue to be made available and in abundance and to ensure that the pressure of uh, um, of uh, uh, providing for the need of the com of the rural people does not fall only on the villages and it uh, uh, sorry only on the forests so that is why uh, activities are undertaken to minimize and reduce this pressure also so now uh, as we have discussed uh, earlier also in other projects also that these panchayati raj institutions play a very very important role by again i'll repeat panchayati raj institutions we mean these community uh, these village uh, administrative committees so they have uh, the main onus of uh, ensuring the uh, success of uh, the joint uh, forest management program goes and falls in the hands of the panchayati raj so amongst the 
amongst many other duties that have been given to these panchayati raj institutions social forestry farm forestry mine of forest produce fuel and fodder and ensuring uh, the uh, the efficient supply of these of uh, fuel and fodder also falls in their duty purview so these uh, pris have an important uh, as uh, it is the responsibility of the pri to <coughs> to manage all these programs which are related to forest management or social forestry so it is not uh, so it is one of their mandated responsibility and duties to see that uh, their uh, forests are maintained and uh, 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 the forest uh, products reach the people and uh, their uh, needs are taken care of so uh, here we are also talking about um, uh 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 we are also talking about their roles and responsibilities in terms of ensuring the efficient implementation of the joint forest management programs now how has uh, 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 this uh, this uh, joint forest management and how has it impacted the life of the of the village community has uh, is an interesting uh, thing to know the impact has been uh, very uh, 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 involving because of the fact that uh, it it deals with a participatory approach and since there is participation of the people in um, uh, uh, in this program it has led to the their empowerment also so empowerment where they feel that it is um, uh, this program is to be run by them has uh, uh, and is has to be run by them and is for them and uh, and will cater to their needs have uh, made this uh, plan in uh, 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 has made this plan plan uh, as such a plan which is um, uh, being run at uh, a participatory best so all uh, all the villagers get involved in this process and uh, they take uh, uh, collective common uh, uh, decisions collective resources are used and um, uh, 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 they all come together in, as a form of a community in maximizing the productivity of the forests in maximizing the success rate of this project and in also putting in all their efforts which are required for the conservation of natural resources so the community has come together to make this uh, joint forest management a success and uh, uh, and uh, this uh, management of the degraded forest uh, uh, by the vicinities uh, vicinity villages has come out as a, has come to play a very uh, important role in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, you know protecting the forests so this uh, is about the the joint forest management program let me see if there is more that uh, participation of community uh, i have already told you about this this we have discussed village economic development as a government plan okay so as a year if we look at uh, what they have given an uh, they have summed up this entire unit where uh, uh, as you can see in on my screen where they are where they are basically saying that the rehabilitation of degraded forest in the vicinity of the inhabited areas people's institutions have been created to manage these government forests in recognition of their first claim on the natural resources as uh, so uh, obviously these people who are living uh, in and around the forest the, the products of 
the forest or the natural resources that are there in the forest, um, uh, 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 the villagers have the first have their first claim on these natural resources, and uh, that is why it is uh, important. And the owners and the responsibility has has been very well felt by them, and uh, they they understand the need of its protection, and that is why they have the villagers and and people have come together to take up activities towards the conservation of the biodiversity and of the in the forest and its environment so this is what uh, is uh, this unit all about now we will talk about science and technology for rural development which is the last unit of block 5 I am, uh, we'll be uh, leaving the last half an hour for discussion of all the units that we have discussed in the last uh, uh, four days. So uh, I still have around uh, 10 to 20 minutes to finish my last unit. And then the remaining half an hour, we will be talking about uh, the any queries and question answers and further discussions We'll, we'll have an open forum for us to discuss the programs and policies commonly being run and in, in your in in your in your various countries. And if there is any best practices that you think do uh, were uh, were very intrigued by any program that we discussed here during these four days, we can discuss that. And of course, we will also discuss about what interesting best practices are there in your country regarding the the categories of development issues that we spoke about during the last four days fine so i'll give you another five minutes to look up this unit for science and technology for rural development i'm having to give you five five minutes to look up the material because i was told uh, in my first or second class that this material is not in the same format as what um, I have, or not all of you have the material universally in the same format uh, present. So uh, you will take around, I understand, around one or two minutes to look for this material. It is titled as Science and Technology for Rural Development. Um, it's block five for me, and under the uh, under the title or heading of natural resource management and environment. Under the head natural resource management and environment, we have a unit of science and technology for rural development. Please look for it and we'll be back in five minutes. We'll meet in five minutes.
Okay, now this unit talks about science and technology uh, and its usage in the rural areas and for rural development. Uh, see, we all understand that science and technology play a very important role in Okay, so we all understand that science and technology plays a very important role in our day-to-day -day lives. And uh, even at the village level, it has an important role to play in, um, in their development, in their social economic development, in their agricultural development, in the development of their livelihood activities. Um, in, uh, uh, it also has a role to play in ensuring uh, better opportunities, innovative uh, ideas and uh, technologies which are uh, scientific and uh, uh, scientific in nature help them in um, can help them into uh, uh, improved agricultural practices. So science and technology plays a very important role in any kind of uh, uh, successful development of, uh, the, uh, of the rural uh, people, whether it is social, whether it is economical, whether economic, whether it is cultural, science and technology plays an important role, which is a uh, uh, accepted fact by all. But the dynamics in rural India and uh, here is that people basically are very traditional and superstitious in, in nature. And most of the practices, uh, uh, most of the activities and practices done by the uh, rural India are indigenous and uh, non-scientific. I, I shouldn't say non-scientific, but uh, are more ind indigenous and localized. So technology, there is a big divide. There's a big digital divide between um, uh, the use of technology and the uh, the uh, the mentality towards using the technology. So it is not merely that uh, our technology, if provided to a part particular section of the society, um, uh, is uh, uh, it, it's not merely that the technology can be just provided to a particular section of the society. Also, uh, what becomes important is to ensure the usage of this technology by changing the mindsets of the people. So while it is beyond doubt that uh, science and technology plays an important role, but uh, uh, but uh, the, uh, uh, the mindset of the people is difficult to change. And this is something that was uh, understood by the policy makers at a very early level. And that is why whatever was uh, being implemented and designed had this uh, concern in mind. And it was only after that that various uh, science and technology inputs were given in the rural development, uh, in, in, uh, were, were given into rural development. Now, uh, we know that uh, uh, there are many benefits of science and technology. And uh, it is an extremely important means of empowering the poor, actually. The rural areas which have not addressed, the, which are uh, till date not, those areas which are uh, not taking up scientific uh, um, uh, methods in agriculture and using uh, the technological knowledge have, uh, have, are not moving at the same pace as those who are using science and technology in agriculture. So, uh, so, so it becomes uh, important for the government to invest in technologies and also to uh, see that uh, uh, the maximum number of uh, villagers and maximum number of people living in rural, rural areas are encouraged to take up these uh, science and uh, technological methods in in um, their agricultural practices and this will in turn lead to their lead to their development and towards the overall uh, development of 
uh, the country's rural areas. So uh, science and technology helps in enhancing the productivity and the, uh, uh, the productivity of the land and which in turn will be uh, will uh, uh, will increase the economic growth of the country if the economic status of an individual increases naturally as an all en encompassing and uh, universalized way then um, uh, it will uh, universally help the economic uh, development of the country also uh, but uh, uh, so so that is why science and technology and it uh, uh, has uh, played an important role in uh, 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 in in various aspects of rural development so uh, there are a lot of uh, science and technology schemes and programs related to science and technology uh, of uh, so rural development is uh, is uh, one of them where uh, science and technology and rural development uh, uh, help. Uh, yeah, in fact, let me let me put it uh, in such a way that uh, by the term uh, rural development, we would be actually meaning the uh, the development of rural areas through uh, through uh, various interventions and through various programs and policies and. Science and technology plays an important role in bringing up this development. So if we look at the, uh, at the fields and areas where science and technology and agriculture go, in, go hand in hand, would actually mean, uh, would actually be, or uh, sorry, I, let me repeat myself. I'm so sorry. Um, so if we say, that uh, if we identify the areas where science and technology and rural development go hand in hand, then actually it would be in the field of agriculture. Since uh, if um, and there are agricultural, uh, uh, if there are advances in the agricultural technology, then there will be an increase in agricultural production. And if there is an increase in agricultural production, then it would mean improving the uh, the life of the rural people which in turn would mean the rural development of that area so various uh, uh, programs that are linked with uh, science and technology and rural development have been launched time and again time and again various programs have been launched for rural development where science and technology has been given or uh, has uh, has uh, uh, has uh, been the major uh, uh, has been the major part of that program. So some of these programs that uh, that we will be discussing are some of these programs in which science and technology has uh, been given a major share in uh, in uh, uh, in running these programs are the science and society program of the department of science and technology of the government of india it includes the science and technology application for rural development so all the science uh, te uh, technologies that are being uh, 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 that are being uh, 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 what what would be the word that are being uh, discovered or uh, invented are being put for rural are being put forward for rural development then there is science science and technology and its application for the upliftment of the weaker section then there is science and technology for women then there is science and technology being used for practical and strategic needs of the sc population scheduled caste that i spoke to you about a very very vulnerable section of our indian society then science and technology uh, is being used for programs uh, in empowering the tribal groups. And then there are schemes for young scientists that are run, run over there to encourage the use of new science and technological methods in their various economic activities. Then there are certain other programs also that are available in the uh, available uh, for the development of animal husbandry and fisheries. Uh, which are also 
are uh, an allied part of agriculture in rural India. So while above uh, focuses on the agricultural activities, these are the allied economic activities related to agriculture in rural area because uh, dairy and agriculture is related, fodder and agriculture is related, uh, animal husbandry and agriculture is related, and livestock is also related. So there are these programs uh, which are also, uh, uh, these programs also focus on science and technology in in uh, uh, in its implementation. So then we have certain, let us not go into the detail of all this, but there are there is a list of these programs where science and technology, the science and technology department has uh, science and technology plays an important role in it, uh, in these programs. Okay. Okay, so uh, just to enhance, so so th these various programs are have been listed here. You can go through them. There are uh, all listed as bullet points. You can uh, go through them, and if there is any problem, we can discuss it in detail later. So as you can see over here, that there is a, that, that there are techno there is a technology mission for drinking water in villages and uh, and is related to water management. In other words, uh, it talks about how technology is being used or how technology is uh, being put in place in providing safe drinking water and also locating new sources of water by uh, uh, new sources of water which can be used by the rural India and rural people. So technology is being used in uh, in this identification. Then there is um, uh, uh, there are technology is being used in immunization programs where they are which aims at reducing the morbidity and mortality due to the different uh, diseases that are uh, that are that may be rampantly available uh, uh, spread in rural areas. Then the national literacy mission, even in education, science and technology is being used because uh, these new improved technological tools have been able to provide uh, better, uh, uh, better audio visual uh, aids, innovative um, uh, techniques, uh, mobilization techniques, uh, good quality blackboards, good, good classes, smart classes, all this has helped in even taking the national literacy mission to a different level all altogether. Then oil seeds mission, there is a, a technology has helped in um, increasing the self-sufficiency of edible oils also by increasing the, their, uh, their seed quality. So uh, technology has uh, played an important role in this field also. And of course, then there is a telecom mission, which is about uh, increasing the connectivity and accessibility. Uh, of um, uh, uh, within uh, India, and uh, it has a uh, technology, and, and of course, telecom has uh, 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 has uh, reduced and shrunk the the gap between uh, countries and uh, geographical distances. So uh, this is mainly where and how technology is being used. Science and technology is being used in in um, uh, programs that are uh, of socio-economic benefits to the rural society and to rural India. So now another, this, this section basically, section 4.3, as you can see, speaks about the uh, spatial technologies and rural development, how uh, various uh, satellite and um, uh, 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 models and information systems have been used and are being used in rural development. So if we look at, if we see, if we see geographical information system, which stands, uh, which uh, short form is uh, GIS, 
it is what is it it is just a computer system which is capable of capturing storing and analyzing and displaying geographically relevant and referenced information and this is uh, very useful in um, uh, for rural development uh, when it comes to any kind of, of planning and monitoring so it is uh, it, it, it is a it is a very innovative scientific tool and uh, it helps in uh, resource management and in development and in development planning so uh, 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 it, what it does it is that um, uh, it is uh, it looks for information and it uh, using this system by using this system we are able to uh, to gather uh, geographical information geographical information about any place on the on the globe so we may be able to collect information about rainfall we may be able to collect information about uh, 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 about uh, uh, the maximum and the lowest temperatures that will go where will be where where is it likely to um, uh, 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 to be uh, very dry where is it likely when and uh, what what months would be uh, uh, humid when will there be a storm coming so all this has helped uh, in a lot of planning agricultural planning so if we are if we are aware about uh, if we are uh, if we are if we are given information about rainfalls if we have uh, information about weather forecasts and if we have information about uh, 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 what kind of um, uh, 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 weather conditions would be, then all this is very helpful in crops and its cultivation and its harvesting. So these kind of forecasts help in uh, uh, help us uh, to plan our immediate future and to plan our uh, immediate activities that we were supposed to take up. So this is an important tool that has helped in making, in better decision making uh, in rural areas. So there is no, so this technology, gender, geographical information uh, system has helped us and the villagers to plan their activities in a more methodical and safe manner. Then we have the global positioning system, GPS. What is GPS? It is a satellite navigation system. And so far, how it is used in agriculture is that um, uh, 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 it, it is that um, uh, uh, that a lot of see what happens is uh, 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 these um, a lot of information is gathered through this uh, through GPS and a database is created. Database is created about uh, the um, uh, the programs and the uh, the programs the various government programs. A database is created, and it is designed so that uh, actually uh, it is designed to um, to ensure that uh, all the data, all the GPS data that is being collected and gathered is uh, being used is uh, is used as a database in the gis and then can be and then it is uh, put to use in various applications of rural development so it's uh, 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 it takes into the uh, uh, the the gps operation constellation it uh, consists of 24 satellites and that orbit the earth in 24 hours okay so these satellites that orbit repeat almost the same ground track once each day. So whatever data they collect, they collect uh, uh, are configured every 24 hours. Okay. So all this data finally is clubbed together into a, a database which is uploaded on the GIS. And then this database can be used for various rural development operations. 
since it is operating the uh, the earth um, um, in every 24 hours a lot of data is being collected and this data whichever is being collected is used for the various uh, rural development programs um, um, through a GIS uh, system. Now we have the third uh, program that we are talking, we will be discussing is the remote sensing. What is remote ses uh, sensing is that basically it is a tool that is able to detect, uh, uh, that is able to detect, uh, uh, detect uh, they, what they have written over here that is deals with the detection and measurement of phenomena with devices sensitive to electromagnetic energy such as light, heat, radio waves. See, I'll tell you, there is a program uh, here in Uttar Pradesh uh, uh, which is called uh, Land Recognition. This was a World Bank funded project, uh, program as is, uh, just a minute, just a second. Okay, so regarding remote sensing, I will give you an excellent example. What happened is that uh, World Bank funded uh, this um, uh, World Bank funded this uh, Sodic Land Reclamation Project. Okay, this was uh, the project was basically being run by uh, the project is basically being run by was being run by the government of Uttar Pradesh, but it was funded by World Bank. So what was uh, what was to be done was the uh, objective of this program was to reclaim the sodic land what do you mean by sodic land sodic means uh, this uh, basically it's a wasteland it's a wasteland which is not fit for agriculture and uh, 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 and uh, besides other reclamation activities being done on that land Gypsum as a product is also mixed into this uh, its soil to to bring down the sodicity and it's a it's a uh, scientific uh, uh, equation that happens over uh, on the soil. So there's a reaction that occurs between gypsum and uh, and the and and the soil the sodic soil and it is the sodicity is uh, reduced and of course. It's not just this. There is also uh, a lot of other activities that are uh, done to reduce the sodicity. Whether it is uh, flushing away of the of the uh, sodic soil uh, of the sodic uh, salts by filling up the field and then uh, flushing the water away. So there are a number of activities. But yeah, coming back to the point. So what happened is this remote sensing technology was used to identify the so they land from uh, through this uh, remote sensing model because otherwise uh, trying to ident uh, trying to identify what percent of uh, of uh, uttar pradesh which is one of the one of the largest states of uh, the country how, how much of uh, 
land is so big in this area, uh, trying to identify it manually would have been an impossible and a humongous task. But this technology from the satellite, we were able to identify through devices, uh, through devices which were um, uh, which had uh, electromagnetic energies, and uh, uh, they were sensitive to sorry, they were sensitive to electromagnetic energy, and were able to identify what kind of uh, how much and which area specifically which area which field which um, uh, locality in which village has sodic land so such kind of a detailed information through global uh, through global resources through global sources was able to reach the government of uttar pradesh and we were able to plan this uh, program and not only plan it it was a successfully a successfully run program and awarded program and uh, uh, and uh, the land uh, was uh, the land which was lying waste since uh, uh, years immemorial or in fact uh, i mean un uh, unimaginable number of years was reclaimed and the farmers now are uh, uh, doing agriculture there are doing farming there and uh, there has been an, a, a, a drastic improvement in their social economic status the entire villages we have now changed uh, into uh, uh, to into successful happy faces as against uh, extremely poor a lifestyle that they were leading before the land was reclaimed. So all these technologies, as, as we can see, play a very important role in rural development. And that is why this unit was uh, discussed and this unit was being in, brought into place as to how science and technology has an important role to play in rural development. With this, all our blocks uh, are over. Our uh, course on uh, rural development programs, MRD 102. As counselor, as a counselor, I have, uh, I have, uh, as a counselor, we have completed. I have done my bit of uh, completing this uh, uh, this uh, program, this program, and uh, of course, I will be available with you as i'm sure you've been able to see how we have uh, how what how i have handled this entire course design is that i've given you a brief about all the programs and introduction about the aims and objectives behind the various uh, categorizations of programs and within these categories also the individual programs what was the objective behind it and what was the reason behind its uh, uh its um, uh, uh, what was the reason behind being it being envisaged and it being planned and it be it being designed so each program has been discussed in detail with you whether it is uh, programs related to poverty alleviation whether they are programs related to uh employment generation whether they are programs related to uh, credits, loans and credits, or like micro credits. Whether it is, uh, if these are programs related to the basic social services uh, uh, in terms of uh, education, or housing, or health, or sanitation, or electrification, or connectivity. So these are basic. Uh, we we call them as basic services uh, that every individual should have, and uh, there are programs being run to ensure these basic services also. And finally, how natural resources in terms of our, whether it is in terms of our forests or it is in terms of our wasteland that needs to be managed and uh, how programs and policies are being uh, put in place to manage the natural resources of our country in terms of uh, our forests or managing the uh, the those areas which have now grown gone gone as waste and uh, 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 to uh, and and because of degradation and uh, erosion so reclamation activities are taken up and programs and policies are aimed towards making them 
suitable for agriculture once again. And finally, we spoke about how technology has played an important role in rural development. So this is how this is how I'm clubbing the entire course and what we discussed in the last four days. And so if there is anything that you would want to discuss, talk, and tell, I would be uh, very obliged and would uh, would be very happy if we could have an interactive session of another 10 minutes. That's the time that we are left with for today. Yes. Yes, Mr. Kwasi. Jimmy. Okay, madam, thank you very much for your wonderful lectures. Please, I want to find out the what project that was carried out by the India government. Was it purposely for only irrigation purposes or for agricultural purposes for people for domestic use? I'm sorry, could you repeat and be a little loud? Okay, I said I want to find out from you who the water shell project by the India government was purposely for agricultural use or is for also for domestic use. Domestic use of yes. Domestic use of what? For the water share project. What project? Could you write it down? I'm not able to understand the project's name. What what project? I Just mean write, the water project. Uh, uh, write it down, please. Just write down what, what project you're talking about. I'm sorry. Are you writing, Mr. Kwasi? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, I'm waiting. Anybody else, whoever wants to ask, can please start writing because uh, there is probably, uh, uh, I'm not, okay, watershed programs. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Others also, please write down. Okay, uh, so uh, Kwasi is asking that what kind of watershed programs are being have been implemented by the Indian government at the local community rural level. So yes, there, there are a number of programs that are being run uh, uh, um, uh, to, as a watershed development program. So basically, watershed is not a program. Watershed is a technology, and there are. Uh, there are programs that are being that have been put into place or implemented or designed to ensure the uh, to ensure uh, the making of these water sheds. So a lot many programs are there. I mean the list is unlimited. Where um, for example, okay, I, I can't. It's, it doesn't make sense to give you the list, but there are a number of lists. Li uh, li there are a number of programs. Uh, where um, water sheds are, uh, where the villagers, where the people who are living um, in uh, uh, the rural population or the rural people have been encouraged to develop water sheds. And these water sheds that are being developed by the people or created by the people 
are being uh, spo- are being sponsored by the government the 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 village population does not have to pay any amount and any uh, money is uh, not taken from their pocket the government sponsors this entire uh, uh, development of this uh, watershed and the rural people this way are able to conserve water they are able to conserve water which is uh, fit for drinking it is used in irrigation it is used for fishery it is used for um, um uh, agricultural purposes it is used for afforestation it is used for all other um, uh, requirements that are uh, that are fulfilled by water or in fact it is able to solve the problem of water shortage which time and again was faced by the rural population so watershed program is a successful program here in india okay the uh, thank you dr uh, watershed okay right my question ma'am is did all these projects and programs applicable to only rural india or both rural and urban see um certain programs are aimed only for rural people certain programs are aimed for only urban people that is why we have two separate departments here in um, uh, uh, in our government there are de- there is a rural for uh, the department for rural development and department for urban development so rural and urban development since in in my first lecture i told you that the dynamics and the um uh, the 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 dy- the uh, type of uh, environment or in fact dynamics is the best word the dynamics the rural dynamics and the urban dynamics are very different from each other so it becomes important that we understand our target audience we understand our target group we understand our beneficiaries and their needs and their requirements along with their mindset and environment for before planning anything for them so the needs of urban and the needs of the poor are different for example i'll tell you a person living in rural area a person living in rural areas is into agriculture okay and that person's main economic activity is agriculture so at that point of time that person is not bothered with health hygiene and housing because they have their own house they may have a small hut for themselves but they have a house food is not a problem for them because food uh, they are able to they since even if they have a small a small land holding they are able to grow enough food for themselves to sustain at a uh, subsistence level um, uh, cultivation they are able to do now this same person the same gentleman may migrate from rural area and come to the urban area and may become a rickshaw puller or may may become uh, may 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 be selling vegetables so maybe okay let's take a example of a rickshaw puller now this person needs totally change here what is needed for for this gentleman a place a safe place to stay they don't have they don't have any place uh, in urban areas with, uh, uh, to stay they are sleeping on footpaths they are sleeping under bridges they are sleeping under concrete pipes so now what is what is the uh, essential requirement the essential requirement here becomes a a, a shelter and that shelter was was uh, taken for granted there in uh, rural areas in rural area what was important water for irrigation because um, protection uh, uh, protection of crops from uh, uh, from uh, uh, from maybe pests maybe from uh, natural uh, um, uh, nature or maybe from uh, storms thunderstorms so their protection of their crop was more important there but here a shelter becomes important so the needs are different of rural and urban people so when the needs are different naturally the programs will be different 
then certain programs definitely when they when we talk about basic human need there are certain programs which run both at the urban and rural level example of one such program is education the literacy program the national literacy mission this has been run all over the country in the same or maybe polio eradication or maybe immunization uh, immunization or maybe tuberculosis so health hazards are common everywhere so health programs are common everywhere and not particularly for uh, rural areas so i hope i'm able to answer that question mr sss <laughs> i don't know what is the full form for that okay how can we ensure that there is sustainability in rural development programs particularly those that are donor funded this is a very interesting question and we discussed it uh, even yesterday any program whether it is donor funded government funded or even um, uh, privately funded or whatever whatever various ways that the program is funded no program can be sustainable if it does not have the community people involved in its implementation if it's a package given to them and they are just supposed to sit and eat it it will not be sustainable the packet has to be owned earned packed packet is just it is just an example the packet has to be owned packed dispatched used reused by the community people then only will they will they understand the importance and the need and the uh, uh, the requirement of uh, they will understand the importance of what is there so every program now instead of it being a charity based program is now a participation or participatory uh, program where the stakeholders where the beneficiaries are also made the stakeholders and are also holding administrative capacities so that is how a program is made to be sustainable by the participation of the community in its implementation if we just have government officials or officials coming and implementing the program for them and they having nothing to do with it no that's not it happens for example if uh, a land needs to be reclaimed so there is the government is giving money so the government can also do is that send uh, laborers over there and uh, uh, until their land take out uh, 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 or maybe make these uh, drains for them water drains for them for water to reach they can just send laborers over there make their payment and uh, the work would be done but no not that is that is not what is done here here the money is given to the land owner to till his own land to buy the things that are needed for making this land more uh, fertile to uh, money is provided to them to by a cement and whatever raw material that is needed in making these link drains and main drains for the water to reach from its source to their fields the action and activities are done by the people of the villages and is done by the land owner him or herself so when that owner is there the responsibility and the success of the program with the responsibility is um, uh, uh you know uh, responsibility is um, what is that word you will say uh if the responsibility is uh, decided then the program is definitely will be a success when responsibility is assigned to a person the program will be successful because this person will ensure that my land gets reclaimed So it is because of participation. Okay, anybody else? I hope uh, these four days were good for you, and um, I wish to meet you. I desire to meet you again. Once again, we'll be probably meeting again. I don't know how it goes. I'll speak to the authorities and see. I'm sure uh, uh, as as we had one meeting sometime, and I was told that uh, if people have queries, they can and they will probably. uh they can schedule our interactions again but i'm not very sure about it 
but uh, as of now i know that you none of you did your readings and uh, once you'll do your reading you'll probably have certain queries so please feel free to ask questions and uh, i'll be there available for your uh, clarifications okay should i sign off now no there are some questions in the chat i have seen those questions how can we ensure sustainability uh, i have answered that how rural india i have answered that watershed i have answered that yes i have answered the questions that were there in the chat there is none other oh there is one okay uh uh just an, oh uh, wait but oh, they just got flooded <laughs> just a second uh, thank you uh, may I elaborate the use of data collected by remote sensing in uh, rural development yes this is a uh, this is a uh, remote sen the data that we see data that we collect in remote sensing is used to uh, is used to identify the problem areas is used to identify the land type and once we are able to identify the land type we know what kind of uh, reclamation activity needs to be taken up in that area so data sensing remote sensing is uh, is used for 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 land reclamation it is used in that uh, sense please give an example on uh, just one uh, uh, slope what are the guidelines for assessing these various rural development programs see uh, various rural uh, 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 guidelines guidelines for assessing these uh, guidelines for assessing these uh, uh, program each uh, uh, development program has separate guidelines of uh, its monitoring and assessment so this is an ongoing thing where um, uh, 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 where uh, Uh, uh mechanisms are be have been designed to see that uh, uh the the programs that are being run are being run properly and whether uh, it is benefiting the people that it is supposed to benefit so that uh, uh, each program has a separate each program has a separate uh, uh, me monitoring mechanism and uh analyzing mechanism okay uh, uh now you are talking kindly give an example of gyan dot uh, gyan dot gyan dot uh, is what is is, is this in context to because gyan dot is actually uh, a project which is uh, which was uh, uh, which was uh, uh, was uh, uh, was uh, initiated to it's it's a computer project it was initiated to uh, to uh, 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 to make uh, to have a, a small computer uh, uh, kiosks where uh, people can uh, can sit in and use the computer for uh, gathering information so it's not particularly um, uh, the the point that we discussed in any of it but it fits in reference to something which i'm not understanding could you please explain because for me gyandoot was a program that was uh, uh, that was uh, about uh, setting up of computer kiosks for people to gather information it could be something else if i'm not uh, maybe i'm not understanding it correctly what are the guidelines for the tk science is very important in agriculture for high production and now my question is science technology used in commercial agriculture only or is it used no no it is used both in commercial and and, and domestic agriculture for domestic agriculture we uh, we train the individual farmers in uh, in the use of its technology okay there are uh, in fact on on rural uh, what are the major impacts of uh, dwakra program on rural uh, women's livelihood uh, see it's a program which has been running with the aim of increasing their uh, uh, their uh, lifestyle and livelihood and uh, it has been able to bring about uh, socio economic empowerment and also political empowerment of who uh, the people living uh, the women living in the rural areas they've been able to uh, 
identify their place in the society. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a program uh, which has uh, really helped the rural women in, um, uh, in, in finding a meaning and place in there. In the, the finding a place and meaning in society, their place, T H E I R. Okay. Uh, please, is there any sem similarity between GIS and remote sensing? See, they are all uh, satellite governed technologies. So they are all scientifically satellite governed technology, each aimed with a different objective and, uh, and each aimed for a different purpose, each designed for a different purpose. So they are all, but they all come together to be used in, uh, used uh, successfully in rural development. Okay. With this, I have answered all the questions here. If there is any more no to go, then uh, can I, any, no one is writing any more. Yeah, there is until unless I missed it last time. No, I didn't. I think that's it. That's all. That is all the questions that here. Fine, and uh, we'll sign off now to meet again sometime soon. It was nice uh, interacting with you, and uh, please feel free to get in touch whenever you want to. Thank okay. you so much. Ma. Bye. Thank you so much. It was lovely being with you guys. Thank you, time. Ma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Have a nice day, too. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.